Hey, it's Patty Wilson with Patty's Playhouse. I'm doing a reenactment of the drive for Wendy Adelson, the day of the murder of Dan Markell. She was leaving her house at 3303 Aqua Ridge Way, which she was renting, and drove south on Centerville Road to Trescott Drive. So we are going to go do that. So this is Erica. Erica's gonna hold Erica's gonna hold the camera while I record. And here's the house on Aqua Ridge. We're leaving 3303 now, and we're heading south on Centerville Road towards 2116 Trescott Drive. And I will be driving and talking while Erica holds the camera. Oh, they have a ring doorbell. Good for them. It's a cute house. Clean Jane inside. I don't think they've done anything to it. These homes go for like buku money now for no reason. All right, you ready? Yep. Is it on record? Yep. So we're leaving the neighborhood of Aqua Ridge and I'm trying not to hit anybody as he just stands in the middle of the road drinking his water. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Can't. It is hot out. It's like 90, 94 and it's 1030. <laughs> God. So we're making a right on Cameron Chase because this is the Cameron Chase development. It's part of Killarne Estates. There's a lot of people out today. It's July, which is why I question that there was no one else who saw the shooting in Benton Hill. Because it was July, 10 o'clock in the morning, something like this. Somebody had to have seen something besides Mr. Geiger. It's very odd. So I'm going down, I'm making a right onto Centerville now and driving towards Trescott. The ride is a little different than it was 10 years ago. But it's still a pretty ride. So she was probably anxiously driving down here, trying to be the first one to find Dan, but she didn't realize a retired neighbor would be at home. That was Mr. Geiger. So when we get to Trescott, I'm gonna, one of the subscribers asked me to stop where I believe the caution tape was, crime scene tape. So I'm gonna stop and then I'm gonna walk down to where the Trescott house is so you can see the difference, how close she was to the home. There's a lot more development through this area now than there was in 14, so there's gonna be a lot more homes and just traffic in general. So I'm gonna, once I get to Truscott, I'm gonna do that horrible K-turn that she did. Ugh. And then, which probably made it so damn obvious what she was doing. And I'm gonna go back down to ABC, the liquor store. And then I'm gonna cut up to where Mosaic used to be, which is now Hearth and Soul, which is like a gift shop, bookstore area. It's pretty. It's owned by Susie Bush of the Bush Beer family. That's it's true. <laughs> it's true. Mosaic went out of business, like I think like a year after the shooting. But I've already shown you, if you go back in videos I've made, I, I went back in, in the archives and found Mosaic's website. We don't know what she had that day, but I bet there was some liquor involved. 
she was dressing like she, you know, got out of a moving truck, which is what we think she was doing. We think she was packing, getting ready to go, and that's why she wouldn't let her ex-boyfriend, Jeffrey Lacoste, in the house. And then when people came over to her home after Dan Markell was shot in his garage, there was barely anything in the house. So we just moved along. So she was packing up and we believe so, rooms yeah. Before he was even right. Shot. So part of Jeffrey Lacoste, who was her ex boyfriend's testimony, was that she was always going down to South Florida where her parents lived in Coral Springs. Mm -hmm. And he said on the stand that she was cleaning out her childhood bedroom. That's what she told him. It's factually kind of incorrect because they sold that home. The Adelson mom and dad, Harvey and Donna, sold the home in 2015. And her stuff was in there. I mean, the boys were three and four and there was a crib in a bedroom. They didn't let go of things, which I guess is a good thing. Just do it. I'll edit that. Don't worry about it. So this whole intersection was different in 14. When like 15 lanes. But still busy. I'm going to let him go. Is it saying temperature still? I'm gonna turn the AAC up a little bit so you can put the, you know, hold it maybe up against that. Yeah, so it can get some. My phone says it's getting hot. Go ahead. Oh, go. All right, well, whatever. Tried. We tried. Really should have those more secured, don't you think? That's what I mean, Erica. When you buy your fence, you might want to go pick out your boards. There's crap like that right now. Who knows how that's going to end up? So we're about to make a right on Centerville. This becomes Blair Stone Road, which cuts across the county. And now we're going down Centerville. This was a little different, of course, in 2014, but Centerville is still the same. If I ever do this again, I should do it on a Friday, show you how much more traffic there is. And she did it around 12, but of course I'm hoping to be at the courthouse at 12. So we're passing Woodgate, which takes you to Thomasville Road, which is a shorter turn to Thomasville Road, ABC, than what she did. speed limit's 35 through here, but this guy with the two by fours is like, he's got diving boards coming out. I mean, they're bouncing everywhere, so. I hope he doesn't turn down trust guy.
So right here is Trescott going down. So you saw there Trescott to Centerville. In one of the testimonies, she's saying she stopped right there and just kept going down Centerville. That was the last trial. Every trial has been a little different. So there's, someone said count speed bumps. <laughs> so there's one speed bump. So you can't really fly through here, but it's a mile from Centerville Road to the home on Trescott. So here's number two. So you have to go slow again. Here's where I told everyone you cross, there's a bridge that goes to the other part of Benton. There's only a sidewalk on one side. And Luis Rivera believes he saw Wendy from a photo because he couldn't read English. So they sent photos with the hit crew. Walking with the kids. We don't know if that's true or not. But someone suggested Lewis saw this information in a blog and Lewis said, there's another bridge. Wendy is the blog. <laughs> I was like, okay. Lewis was pretty funny. So you have to go slow. There's like four speed bumps now. There's another one coming up. Here is where I cannot get out and walk. Here you go. But right here is where the caution tape was. See where that sign is and the telephone pole? If you watch the video that Kendall Brandt put out with WTXL, this is the house where the caution tape was put up. So it's right there. Oh, look at the little boy riding down the street as if he's 16. Look at that. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Not even going the speed limit. Mommy, Daddy, where are you? Oh, wait. I know your parents, kid. Oh, wow. I've been in that house. I know your parents. Hmm. Anyway, so this is the home where you hear Erica's gonna scan this house so you can see it. And I'll try to clip in Kendall Brandt's video. You can zoom out on that. See it? So right here at this telephone pole was where the caution tape was. And there's a speed hump. And she's saying that she made a three-point turn and came out, which she would have had to. She was in a, a minivan. But it wouldn't have been easy to do, right? It wouldn't have been easy. In fact, it would have been very challenging. So here is somebody who cut the curb for a little grass driveway, which is kind of smart. I gotta figure out where I can turn around. I'm gonna turn around in that driveway. So I'm not going past Trescott, the house, I'm just turning back up. Now, at this point, she said she went up Benton. I'm going to figure out what cut through that is. I think that's Chamberlain. Hold on. So I'm gonna go up, back up Trescott.
and take a right, and that's when she said she went up Betton. So she probably went up Blythe to Betton. So Blythe is right he, here, B-L-Y-T-H-E. She didn't mention this street, but she did mention, I think at the first trial, she turned around and went up Betton. So this takes you to Randolph, another beautiful street. Really beautiful homes back here. This neighborhood back in the day when it was developed was for FSU professors. That's primarily what was here, was people that worked at FSU and wanted to live here, close by. these homes go anywhere from 500 to well over a million but when she lived here it was like 200 to 300 affordable <laughs> yeah but at then it was a different time I mean, you know money wasn't the same so I'm on Benton Road And the traffic is, of course, heavier than it would have been, but it would still have been heavy. That's why I said nothing, none of this is a shortcut. It's much easier to go down Centerville at the light of Benton and make a right to go across than it is to try and turn on one of the side streets. Much, much easier. So now I'm going to... ABC and you see this back up it's the same way it would have been oh can you take a picture of that I've never noticed that sign the plantation cemetery at that let me look that up say all the remains of a much larger cemetery for African Americans dating from the pre-civil war Turbot Benton was a prominent community. So coming up here is this sign on for uh, Trescott. Right here. So you make a right and then you get to the house. But we're gonna go to the ABC liquor store, so I'm gonna get in this lane. Turning left on Thomasville to the ABC. It's in the exact same location. It's just dressed up. Southern Flooring was there, 2014. Nice Mercedes. So she likely would have parked here, gone in, bought her bullet. It's not bourbon, it's rye, the green label. Walked in, bought it. There was a receipt for the time. Because you can't make a left out of there, she would have come out here, prayed that somebody let her out. This is where the yoga place was that she went to. Right here. that she met Jeffrey Lacoste that night. This is the yoga store right up here at Benton. There was a shooting there years afterwards. Some freak who didn't like women went and shot it up. Sorry, my windows are dirty, but you can really tell that right now. So when Jeffrey Lacoste met her that last night, of what he says was their relationship was in this parking lot because it was just a minute from Trescott 
But again, she probably, you know, she may have gone there all the time, but when you relocate to another area and you've been there a year, you kind of like start migrating, right? Migrating your stores, migrating your stuff, don't you? Erica, do you still, you just moved. Do you still go to the same stores that you did before? Well, no, I go to the ones that are closer. I mean, I mean, doesn't it make, I don't know. I have to put a survey down for people and ask if they still like you don't go to the old Circle K you're going to the one closer to where you are this is what's going to be difficult yes I've migrated to the Appalachian Walmart it's horrible it's better than Tennessee I've never, I don't think I've ever been in that one good for you <laughs> oh yeah when you lived over off of Cali yeah Street. Yes. I had to go in there on Sunday to get my husband something for his potluck at his church. I walked in and immediately started to sweat. I was like, <laughs> I don't feel anxious very often, but that was like, why did I forget my life? Why did I forget to get him something yesterday? Why didn't I make something? Why, why, why? Why am I here? I literally just wanted to go in and get cupcakes. And a guy ran into my cart. There's no one there. He turned away. No, no sense of self-awareness. Turns around and bangs. I'm like, dude, do you not see me? I'm the big girl. No, no, don't see you. I mean, he was very apologetic. He wasn't rude about it, but I was still like, why am I here? Don't make me go back. I usually try to go to the main one. Mm -hmm. Much better. Carts work. Isn't there a big disaster that happened on the one on Mayhem just a few months ago? Yeah. There's a disaster at all. Okay, so now we're back on the Thomasville Road. Very similar to what it was 10 years ago. And we're driving up... Thomasville. Thomasville to go to where Mosaic used to be. So this is the same route that the freak hit crew would have taken when they left Trescott to get to I-10 to get to their crappy hotel. This is kind of where the bus saw Lewis and Siegfried which at the time, it was years later, I found out, I didn't know the buses had, even in then, 14 cameras on the side of the bus. That's how they caught them. Because they found the Prius, and the neighbor, Mr. Um, Geiger, said he saw, thought he saw a Prius-style vehicle leave Trescott, and the bus caught it. So the bus caught it going to and coming from, which is how they figured out that he was shot at around 10.53 in the morning. And if you haven't seen it, go look at Wendy Adelson's condo for rent. There's the boys' room, which has a clock on the wall that says Friday, 10.53. It's despicable. And then also the route she would have taken to go up to Market Street. where the Momos is and Hearth and Soul. So all of these lights, this would have been the same ride. Did she feel anxious going to Mosaic? Did she feel like, how much was she able to eat? No, you have a hit crew taking out your ex-husband. How much were you able to eat that day, lady? I have so many questions. <laughs> so many questions for her. So later today, at 1.30, her mother's, who's being incarcerated in Leon County Jail since November of last year, I think the 13th she was arrested. She was on her way to Vietnam. Her mother's second case management hearing is today at 1 30. 
So I don't have the equipment to stream from the courthouse yet, but I'm gonna get it for the next case management so that I'm gonna teach Erica how to run the YouTube while I'm in there, courtroom. That would be fun, right? I'm all for it. Are you? Mm -hmm. Good. big circle she did for no reason mm -hmm. right other than it's a really nice Bentley by the way did you see that I did not it was that gray black car at the end that's a Bentley you don't see too many here if I won the lottery I would buy a Bentley and then a Mercedes convertible vintage We just went under I-10. Lewis and Siegfried would have taken I-10 to go back to their crappy airport, I mean, hotel, or to leave town. I think they just left. Oh, I'm in the wrong way. And they just went directly to Gainesville and threw away the gun somewhere. So the next intersection, this is Timberlane Road. The next intersection is Market Street. So if you're not aware, once Wendy was in Mosaic, we don't know which drink course she was on when Craig Isom, when Craig Isom, I cracked myself up, uh, detective showed up inside Mosaic. We don't know how he figured out she was there and went in and asked her to come with him. And apparently she just went, not asking, why are you taking me? What am I doing? What's wrong? Is, are my kids okay? None of that, no. No questions. My husband calls me on the daily. I say, what's wrong? Like, what? <laughs> you don't even ask. Nothing. Nothing. She didn't ask anybody. She's an attorney by training, as she says. And she just walks quietly with Craig Isom when the police are in there and breaks up her drink courses. So making a left right onto Market Street. takes her and for five hours she's in the police interrogation police departments on 7th Avenue right in Midtown so it's not far from the Trescott house of this was here those stores weren't here this was so this is the location of the mosaic not where chicken salad chick is but where hearth and soul is so it's a small parking lot she would have parked somewhere around here she was late for her lunch because she stopped to get bullet bourbon for her fill the bar party and this is where it was mosaic so she walked in had a drink or an appetizer or some salad with kale and then went about her business back to 7th Avenue for her five hour police questioning to fake cry. This is it. 
So we're oh hi. <laughs> Thank you, Erica, for holding the camera. Anytime. So I don't get a ticket. I appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you all later. Bye. <laughs>